I want to talk about part 108. Uh, what is this? Why is this? Dave, have you heard of this? Do tell. I heard about this a couple, like two years ago, they started mentioning this, but I hadn't heard any. And I heard recently that it was coming back up, but I, I want to know the deets. Give us the deets. Please. So I, I, there's not a lot of deets. Um, so part 108 is not a real thing just yet. It is still a proposal. The proposal right now is to create an additional certificate under. Remember, so part 107 is the rules that you're certificated under. Part 108 would be its own new code of federal regulations. It would require another certificate to earn, which means another test to go take. However, they're talking about two big things, which is allowing beyond visual line of sight. And here's the real big one, and Dave, I think you'll like it, which is shielded operations. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they're talking about uh, 100 meters um, for shielded operations. So that would be um, that'd be killer for the FPV community. So yeah, I realize it's, it's another written test to go take and a little more studying. But man, to get shielded ops would be killer. Yeah, they give me my in, forests, my my underpasses, my yeah. bandos. Would you, You're Dave? Exactly uh, right. Would you? Would you, uh, Dave? Explain what shielded operations are and how it would affect the FPV community. Specifically. Well, there's this old idea that there's this loophole that if you're underneath something, you're no longer in the airspace because mm -hmm. you're under a building or you're under trees and airplanes can't go there. Right. And since airplanes can't go under trees, why can't I fly under trees? If airplanes can't fly between these two buildings, why can't I? Right. Logic dictates. <laughs> but, but we know so, our government isn't logical, don't we? <laughs> right. But they're going to have to further define, you know, from a regulatory standpoint, what, what are shielded operations? Why is a forest shielded operations, but a tower standing alone by itself may not be? I, and I'm not saying that's a, a fact just yet. So they'll have to define that. They will be tested on it. It's going to fall under part 108. And again, to, to share with everybody where this process is at, this is still, this is uh, not even out for comment just yet this is just a proposal at this point it then will go to comment and then it'll continue on and notice proposed rulemaking uh phases with this so this is years out from coming to fruition maybe year maybe years plural it's a while from coming to fruition so don't sweat it but i know with all the gloom and doom of remote id and stuff there's a little glimmer of hope because i would love beyond visual line of sight and really love shielded operations for everybody is this yet again just something that corporations are making for their tube sock delivery that is trickling down to us. Here's the scary part. Since it is just, and it's like AUVSI and a bunch of the, the big industries that are, are industry uh, leaders that are pushing this right now, the Amazons, the Airbuses of the world haven't gotten their hands on this just yet, and they will, unfortunately. Remember, remote ID started out much differently than the remote ID that's, that's being pushed through now. Uh, remote ID wasn't as big and scary um, as the as the versions getting pushed through now. So there will be many, many different takes, many different versions of this. What I'm sharing with you now is just version number one. Is um, is remote ID getting pushed back? I heard some rumors that it might be delayed. Uh, I haven't heard that rumor. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, I'm dealing with the FAA on some some manned aviation things, and it's everything's just a little little slow. Because um, manufacturers are supposed to have it implemented like next month. Yeah, yet it they is getting released they the spec get, for it. Yet. It is getting They're pushed back. Say, it is getting pushed back. I can confirm. Is that. it? Yeah, I don't it, know how it's, far. It's going to have to. They can't get chips. They can't get anything. Right. And you're right. The manufacturers can't even produce it yet. So. But if this 108 thing uh, becomes a thing, then uh, will that be uh, a course that you teach on? Uh, you know the uh, no doubt the old yeah, remote We're going to be watching it really really closely uh obviously it will be a course that we will release uh you know to the highest caliber and quickly and professionally and everything else to kind of love on this community and just give us more airspace to fly in and, and some really cool places i mean imagine um this open shield operations opens up so many new airspace options and everything else uh so i'm quite excited about that yeah now by the time this happens will you and your uh part 108 instructional videos have gray hair or <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Will it I be mean, that if long? I keep hanging out, if I keep hanging out with you and having these all these Skype crises, it's possible. Oh, Skype crises. <laughs> That's going to do it.
<laughs> yeah. I, I highly encourage everybody to go out and get a 107. If you ha- are even just drone curious, it will teach you so much information. Jason has got an awesome service where he can teach you that information quickly and easily. But just knowing the rules is so helpful for me. I mean, I may be a little bit of a rebel, but I know those rules and I know how far that line is and where it is, if I'm going to have to cross it or not. It really and knowing is. Knowing those rules is really important. It's and a, it's it a power. It allows me to do awesome work. Like I flew uh, a building implosion last month and they wow. blew pyrotechnics off the top of the building and you bet they wanted that paperwork and they wanted it all right. And I had to have registration and all mm. the T's crossed. They wanted all the information and my insurance and all that. Uh, so Go out and get that license. It will allow you so many opportunities to just fly your drone in awesome places and get paid to do it. And I think yeah. everybody should. Yeah, and next time a cop bothers you, you go, well, I know more than you do. Because that's what they like. Don't do that. The best thing to do is just put the goggles on them. Put the goggles on the police officer. That's pretty cool. And you have a friend immediately. They love to go fast. I've never met a police officer that wasn't a bit of an adrenaline junkie. So you're going to find yeah. cops that want to go fast and want to see what you're doing. Most yeah. of them really like it. And if you can get them to wear the goggles, you can usually <laughs> if get you can get them to be there. If you get them, to, I actually did. Uh, I did put goggles on a cop once, and he said to me, "He said, now this is going to be fun and all, and I, you look trustworthy." Uh, don't don't be alarmed, but I am going to put my hand on my gun. You know what I mean? Because, like, he can't, sense, yeah. right? Like, he doesn't know right, me. Yeah. He doesn't know if I'm going to blind him. Go, You know what I mean? He doesn't have a spotter. Right, yeah. So right. I was like, I am cool with that. <laughs> and he loved it, yeah. though. He loved it. So It's so much fun. Yeah. They love it. If you can get anybody to ride along, you got a friend. Yeah. yeah true. Uh, will there be Jason, uh, of course, in uh, NPRM and all that stuff uh, with, with all this? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. So. Oh yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna go through the whole process, just like we had our opportunity to comment on remote ID and everything else. We'll have our opportunity to comment on this. I'm sure some big corporations are gonna sneak in some sketchy looking stuff that we're gonna have to fight out and everything else. And just know that myself, our team here, we've all been reading up on it and just continuing to stay abreast on what's happening, so we can keep you keep everybody informed and let you know when it's time to start making those comments as well if things get ugly. All right. Well, thank you for that information, sir. No problem, so I'll keep you in the loop. This video lovingly sponsored by RemotePilot101.com. If you are serious about making money with your drone, whether it be photography or FPV, well, then you're going to need from the FAA a 14 CFR Part 107 certification. And the best place to study for that certification is RemotePilot101.com. Jason Shepard is a pilot and author of eight best-selling aviation flight training books. And yes, taking tests suck, especially government tests. But Jason breaks it down into 10 easy lessons into little digestible pieces that even someone like me can learn from. And if I can do it, you can do it, by golly. Each lesson is streamlined. There's no fluff. Everything you need to know for the test and nothing more. Plus, it's regularly updated, so if something new comes out, a new regulation, or the FAA just has a mood swing, Jason will let you know about it. As more and more drones are integrated into the United States airspace, the FAA will be coming out with more and more regulation, including things like remote ID and all the other crazy things you've been hearing about. So protect yourself, get the knowledge, become a Part 107 certified drone operator. There's never been a better time to get certified. So get the smarts you need to pass that test at remotepilot101.com. Use Heron 18 to get 30% off. That knocks the price down to 104 bucks. Look at that, boom, magic time. You wouldn't drive without a driver's license. Don't fly without a UAS license. RemotePilot101.com